Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Open Mic Night live at the Zoom Bar DC. We've got a great show for you tonight. We've got Bill Sherman, we've got Joseph Stegner, and more. So sit back, relax, and Bill Sherman's going to kick us off. So take us, take it away, Bill. Thank you, Marie Louise. We were born before the sun Also born before the wind I'm starting over again. Sorry, I got distracted. We were born before the wind Also younger than the sun Ere the bonnet boat was won As we sailed into the mystic Hark now hear the sailors cry Taste the sea and feel the sky And together we will fly as we sail into the mystic And when that fog home blows You know I will be coming home And when that fog home blows, yeah I want to hear it, don't have to fear it, I want to rock your gypsy soul, just like way back in the days of old, yeah. and majestically we will flow. fog home blows you know I will be coming home yeah and when that fog home blows I want to hear it but don't have to fear it and I want to rock your gypsy soul yeah just like way back in the days of old, yeah. And majestically we will fall as we sail into the mystic. And together we will float as we sail into the mystic. If I did my homework. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Thank you. You're Very welcome. Very nice. Very nice. Love that. When I left the ambulance and I only had two albums, um, one from neighbor gave me, one of them was Moon Dance by Van Morrison. And I just right. looped that song over and over during my uh, transition from full-time medic to poet. That was a, a 
a, a key song that I, I played a lot just because yeah, I, I, I liked the way it made me feel. I had Moon Dance in 1969 was when I got the album. And wow. uh, actually, uh, the, the, the song that I learned first off of that album was, uh, uh, and it stoned me to my soul. Oh, I love that song. Oh, that is, that's poet's oh, classic. Yeah, that's So beautiful. I guess I'll have to do that for you too at yeah. some point in time. I'd love that. I'd love that. Stone me to my soul. Sorry. Sometimes I have a hard time getting my head into the next song because the first song is like so so in there. to hide Then I saw Carmen and the devil walking side by side And I said, hey Carmen Come on, let's go downtown She said I got to go but my friend here can stick around Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load off in him And You put the load right on me Well, crazy chest followed me And he caught me in the bog He said, I will fix your rap If you just take Jack my dog I said, wait a minute, Chester, you know I'm a peaceful man. I said, that's okay, boy, just won't you feed him when you can. I take a load off Fanny, I take a load for free. I take a load off Fanny. You put the load, put the load right on me. Well, go down, Miss Moses. There ain't nothing that you can say. It's just old Luke. And Luke's waiting on the judgment day Said Luke, my friend What about young Annalise? He said, do me a favor, son Won't you stay and keep the Annalise company? Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load Load right on me. And 
Now I catch the cannonball Now to take me on down the line well, My bag is sinking low And I do believe it's time To get back to Miss Fanny You know she's the only one Who sent me here with her regards for everyone Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load off Fanny Put the load right on me Take a load off Fanny Take a load for free Take a load off Fanny You put the load right on me I like that one too. Yeah. Yeah, Bill. I love that song. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> oh, awesome. Such a great song. Yeah, I like it. And you do so, it so you know, well. We all know how I feel about the band. Yeah. I just love the band. Or I loved, loved the band. Yes. Well, you can still love them. You still love them. You still love the band. I guess so. There's only one of them left, you know. Wow. Yeah, Robbie Robertson's the only one left. Wow. Well, that's okay. We're all getting old, you know. That's that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Joseph, you ready? I think I am. Okay. So I'm going to start with the Magic Key of Destiny the song I wrote, I've done it here before, but I presented it where it wasn't expected. I was what's called the test speaker this past Saturday for Toastmasters International District 4's annual evaluator, evaluation contest. What that means is I was the one who was giving a speech that all the champion evaluators of the district who had won their area, won their division, and now they were there were six of them competing against each other. Who could be the best evaluator? And evaluation is not an easy thing to give an oral evaluation of somebody in front of other people who saw the same speech. It takes a certain amount of courage, bravery, skill, eloquence, wit, caring, empathy, but also a little edge of willingness to say what you think about somebody if they should have done, could have done something better. And uh, so it was a blast to be able to give the speech to such a wonderful audience. The district represented everyone from the Golden Gate Bridge down to Palo Alto and the Los Altos Hills, all the way to the Pacific Ocean across. So basically most of the San Francisco Peninsula. And we were hosted at Seaman, no, I'm sorry, Gilead Sciences. Gilead Sciences was our host. And so I was sure to include uh, extolling them for their mission, making a healthier world for all people is their motto. And what a fantastic motto. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I did. I had everybody applaud to that. Um, but and then I ended the song with this. I wanted to give them something to take with them. So this is what it was. For the magic key of destiny, have comfort in love and humility, so you can flow like water to the sea. And all those words like sticks and stones, you can't design to break our bones, will merely be like breezes through our trees. And you will know that where you are is where each moment finds its star. When you let love's light shine through you that far. One more time. 
For the magic key of destiny, have comfort into love and humility, so you can flow like water to the sea. And all those words like sticks and stones, the kind designed to break your bones, will merely be like breezes through your tree. And you will know that where you are is where each moment finds its star. When you let love's light shine to you that far. <laughs> And I actually had a magic key of destiny that I had made for a speech years ago. Yeah. And uh, so that was the prop. It was magic key. So you had the prop? Of, it was, yeah, it was a big old key, a big old key where it said magic key of destiny on the part that you'd hold with your hand. And on the actual key part, it said confidence, love, and humility. Very <laughs> and one of the. Yeah, and one of the contestants who didn't even didn't play it, she asked for it. She goes, what are you going to do with that now? And I said, well, do you want it? She goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now she's going to hang it in her house. So nice you gave away your piece. magic key of destiny. I did. That is very I did. kind of you. And you know what I did, too? Because she was given the rules. The rules were that you had to stay within a certain space so that the camera saw the whole, your entire body the whole time. If any part of your body left the camera frame, you were disqualified. But yeah, all the speakers beforehand, including like the president of Toastmasters International, past president, were saying how we need to connect with the audience. And the best thing to do is to, to connect with the audience. Well, right from the gate, as soon as her speech started, she crossed that line, that barrier, and went to the audience and started connecting with the audience. And she made me feel special. It was awesome. But she just was instantly disqualified for it. But, and so I saw that she actually unlocked the true power to the magic key of destiny because she gave without expecting anything in return she could have stayed she could have stayed wanting to win and but she reminded me of me when i was at that same level competing in table topics i had determined that it, that was the end of the line just like it was for evaluators that was the championship same audience whether you win or lose it's the same audience so when i made it to district I decided that I didn't care about winning as much as I wanted to make the audience feel special. And I wanted to say thank you to my fellow Toastmasters for making my life so special. Because I, I had just been come back after taking time off after being shot. And, uh, and I was just so full of gratitude and wanted to share that. So she reminded me of me of me by not caring about winning as much as just giving the audience. Giving, right, giving. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that so was pretty cool. I, I, I was glowing for a couple of days there. Still am a little bit. <laughs> Great. Great story. That yeah. was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I forgot. I actually had one more to do. I, I forgot that I had one more time. Well, I was wondering, did I do Window to My Insanity before? Does that sound familiar? Window to My Insanity? Because I'm thinking of doing it right now. Okay. How it I looks to me. I don't remember. How it looks to me like no one else can see. A window to my insanity. What lingers in the life of a first responder is awareness of the worst that can be, like observing a specter of horror that no one else can see. Like anything to anyone can have a different effect. Many a medic has endured the profession without their foundations being wrecked. I, on the other hand, have had no inner escape. 25 years of torment, feeling the need to prevent can't wait. The blood of homicide, the weeping of mothers, the crying of family, friends, sisters, brothers. The uniform requires action that cannot delay on such things, but they are wounds that are not addressed by the agenda an ambulance brings. The preservation of human life now and with all focus is where attention grips, even when the protocols can't perform a hocus pocus after bullets through a heart rips. 
Call after call, the weight must be dropped after each one, else movement be stopped. Some are better at this than others, and longevity has been their song. While others have had such have such nature, they can't carry the job that long. The wounds that whip repeatedly during the course of just one call, like how the tongue is tied from sharing any info at all. When neighbors who've been friends for decades are by protocol kept in the dark, even though we have the inside scoop, having met them only after we parked, or hearing the family held back by police from seeing their loved one hit by a train with never a chance for closure of that hole that will always remain. Or parents in confusion from their son with a bullet in his head because he put it there himself thinking all were better if he were dead. Then on to the next call, who knows what that might be. Perhaps they are vomiting blood or maybe have an ache in the knee. Then it's on to the next call, who knows what that will be. Perhaps an innocent passenger busted by a vehicle trying to flee, running from the police, tons of steel and excess speed until collision with my patient whose pelvis snapped and started to bleed. That was immediately following a woman shot in her chest who died while squeezing my arms by all effort to do my best. Or well, that morning you and your partner saw smoke from the freeway and drove to check it out before the calls started rolling in to have ambulances about. Then hearing another put themselves on scene while they were still a mile away, causing us to be dispatched to abdominal pain now in its third or fourth day. Then hearing the radio is on our hips announced that the building collapsed. Multiple firefighters trapped within, my partner angry that my rear on scene lapsed. She would later marry a firefighter and her torment was sincere to not be there when needed, when we were indeed first to be there. Just a tangent of thought that I've barely thought of since, but somehow in reflection, it made my memory wince. One of them was pronounced dead at the hospital. Back to the present and how my madness came out last night when the action of my anger caused me to do what I know wasn't right. Yet, despite its tragedy, it reflects what occurs every day when that which is solid and beautiful is simply not cherished and thrown away. What happened was uh, I, I had a, to get rid of a very nice dresser, belonged to my friend who recently died. His wife moving in with their daughter didn't need it anymore. Beautiful dresser, but big and heavy. And we put it on the curb for three days and nobody claimed it. And I was exhausted, tired, burned out. Had I just didn't feel like messing too much with it. I busted that thing up and threw it in the back of my truck to save up space. I saved the mirror, but I, the dresser itself was done. So that's what that was. But that's a different story for another time. Describing matters of the soul is exhausting. It's easier not to try. During my six hour of pulling weeds from, for my third employer of the day, I began to grow angry inside that only what is personally gained is my labor yet used for pay. I spend many hours every day volunteering the time of my soul to try to tackle those demons that fill a graveyard hole. For people I don't even know and will never even meet, I sacrifice my conscious time to keep their blood off of the street by grappling the reasons people think that they should fight or even be the hands of warfare with mass homicide thought as right. But pull those nasty dandelions, guns will fire when they fire. Shut up, stupid poet, pull them weeds till your fingers tire. Mow my lawn so my house looks nice. Who cares if current events will lead to slaughter of me and my wife? It's more pleasant to be short-sighted and ignore the neon signs of what becomes of humanity when we don't see each other as divine. Sigh. And I wrote that April 25th. So that's it from me today here on Zoom Bar DC with the wonderful, vibrant host, Marie Louise Merville, and the wonderful cheerleading of Marcia Kinyard and Judy Taylor. Yay. <laughs> I don't think that you've ever uh, done that one for us, and I think that's uh, one of your better poems. I think that's I think that's Thanks. really a, a great poem there. Thank you. Yeah, that was awesome, Joseph. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Uh, our 40th reunion is coming up, and there are some po- pictures posted of the cheerleaders from way back, you know, Newtown High School years. So, and it's true having having both the, having your cheerleaders in the audience, it's good for us. So I appreciate it, Marcia and Judy and Bill. I always love your encouraging words to everyone too. So. Yay! And of course, Marie Louise is the chief cheerleader. The chief cheerleader. <laughs> and really, thank you for that, Marie Louise. That's you're awesome. Oh, thank you, Joseph. You're awesome. Thanks. Um, so Bill, you want to do two or three or four more? <laughs> well, I think I got two at least. Okay. And then I can get boring and do stuff I've done before just because I'm not prepared with anything else. I love the stuff you've done before. Just bear with me. Little Bob Dylan. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. I'll wake up in the morning, fold my hands and pray for rain. I got a head full of ideas that are driving me insane. But they say, mop, mop that damn floor. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's brother no more. Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's brother no more. He hands you a nickel, he hands you a dime. He asks you with a grin if you're having a good time And he finds you every time you shut the door Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's brother no more Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's pa no more Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's Pa no more. I don't remember the words, something about windows here. The National Guard stands guard. Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's pa no more he puts his cigar out in your face just for kicks well I ain't gonna work for Maggie's pa no more well I ain't gonna work for Maggie's ma no more Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's Ma no more. Well, she talks to all the servants about God and love and law. 
everybody says that she's the brains behind Pa. She's 68, but she says she's 24. Well, I ain't gonna work for Maggie's Ma no more. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. Well, I try my best just to be who I am. But everybody else wants me to be just like them To shame the way they make me mop the floor They say you whistle while you work but I just get bored Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. Well, I ain't gonna work on Maggie's farm no more. There you go. So Great next song. up, I'm pulling something out of my hat that I haven't done for, let's see, from 60 years, for 50 years. I haven't done it for 50 years. And I just started to pick it back up again today. So if I screw it up, don't blame me. <laughs> Somewhere in the deep black mountain hills of South Dakota lived a young boy named a rocket raccoon. <laughs> One day this woman ran off with another guy, another guy Hit young Rocky in the eye Rocky didn't like that, said I'm gonna get that boy Can't believe it, just meant, said I'm gonna get that boy Can't believe it, forget it not going to do it. I'll have it for next week. Can't believe it. I, I had it this afternoon, and all of a sudden it's gone. Somewhere in the deep black mountain hills, South Dakota, there's a young boy named Rock Raccoon. One day his woman ran off with another guy. Hit young Rock in the eye. Rock, it didn't like that. Said I'm going to get that. Said I'm going to get that boy. So one day he walked into town. Nah, nah, I don't have it. I don't have it. I've got to. I've got to work on that some more. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, another Bob Dylan song. But it's. Uh, but I learned it the way the birds did it. Um, a flask, a flask so swift, the rain, flask so, nope. Flask, 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 flask so, flask so swift, the rain won't keep on. Wow, my head's gone blank tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do this because I never forget this. What is it, Marie Louise? Willen? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I've been right by the wind, beat by the snow, have been drunk and dirty, and don't you know? But I'm still, still willing. Dry 
driving the road late at night. I see my pretty Alice face in every headlight. I said, Alice, whoa, Dallas, Alice. And I've been from Tucson to Tucum, carrying from Hatcher Peak to Town of Paul. I've driven every kind of rig that's ever been made. back road so I wouldn't get away and if you give me weed white sand wine and you show me a sign yeah and I'll be willing to be moving I'll be willing to be moving on I've been right by the wind Beat by the sleet Had my head stove in But I'm still on my feet And I'm still in a whole lot of trouble. Smuggled some smokes and folks from Mexico, baked by the sun. Every time I go to Mexico, and I'm still, and I've been from Tucson to Tucum, Karen, from Hatcher Peak to Town of Paul. Driven every kind of rig that's ever been made. Mm -hmm. Driven in the back road so I wouldn't get away. And if you give me weed, white sand, wine, and you show me a sign. I'll be willing to be moving. I'll be willing to be moving on. Thank you. Thank you. Let us be lovers, we'll marry our fortunes together. I've got some real estate here in my bag So we bought a pack of cigarettes And Mrs. Wagner's pies And walked off to look for a man Kathy, I said, as we boarded a Greyhound in Pittsburgh. Michigan seems like a dream to me now. It took me four days to hitchhike from Saginaw High. I've come to look for a man. Laughing on the bus, playing games with the faces, 
She said the man in the gabardine suit was a spy I said be careful, his bow tie is really a camera Toss me a cigarette I think there's one in my raincoat We smoked the last one And now we're going So I looked at the scenery and So I looked at the scenery she read her magazine, yeah, and the moon rose over an open field. Kathy, I'm lost, I said, though I knew she was sleeping. I'm empty. And I don't know why Counting the calls on New Jersey Turnpike They've all come to look for America Yeah, I messed it up a little bit here or there, but you got the general gist of it. It's such yep. a great song. I get goosebumps when you sing it. Oh, well, thank you. That, that's yeah. a compliment. Best. That's, that's goosebumps a compliment. and tears. So those, goosebumps. Those yeah, are the best. A, yeah, goosebumps and tears. Really. Best compliments. Thank you. You're welcome. We good or you want another one? I think we're good. Okay. Um, that's our we'll show. Thanks, we'll everybody. Thank you, Marie Louise. Thank you, Marie Louise. Thank you, everybody. Always, it's always Thank wonderful you. that you host this every Tuesday night. It really is. It really Rain is. Rain or shine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank You're you so awesome. much for being here and making Tuesday so special. Yeah, it is special. All Thank right. you. We'll see you all next you. week. Love you all. Thanks, okay. Learn, learn that music next for next week. Oh, Rocky Raccoon? Okay. Yeah, and the yeah. other one. Just remember them. Yep. Yeah, I got it's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good, Good night, night, folks. Love you. Good all. night. Love you guys. Bye. Love you too. Bye bye. Take good care. Thanks. You too. Yeah. I will.